One area where all the Arkham games consistently innovated was enemy types, and Arkham Knight was no different. This game introduced mini gunners, drone controllers, optically camouflaged enemies, and of course, medics. These bad boys possess the most powerful item in all of fiction, a stun gun capable of bringing even the most horribly mutilated corpses back from the dead. But as powerful as they are, they're not all that difficult to deal with. I mean, there's never more than a few in a single encounter. But what if the game didn't try to balance them? What if the limit on medic spawns wasn't in place? Can you beat Batman Arkham Knight if every single enemy is a medic? Through the use of my genius intellect and a YouTube tutorial, I was able to map console commands onto various different keys on my keyboard, allowing me to change the game in ways you could never even imagine. But today, the only command I'm interested in is this one, because by using this command while on a death screen, I was able to make every single enemy in the game a medic. If you want to know how to do this for yourself, then this video by Mr. Just Arkham Games is an excellent tutorial on how to set up and use console commands in each of the Arkham games. The link to that video will be in the description. Usually I would go over some rules for the challenge, but seeing as this one is pretty straightforward, that won't be necessary this time. My journey began on the main menu, where I selected the hardest difficulty, and then headed into the game proper. One thing immediately became clear to me. Detective mode was not going to be very helpful this run. From a distance, thugs would stay as the standard blue and orange blobs. But as soon as I got close, they suddenly stopped being highlighted. This actually made it harder to spot them with detective mode than without it. Luckily, this bad news was met with some good news, since the first few combat encounters were a breeze. And after saving Poison Mommy and going through a few tank fights, I obtained the objectively best gadget in the history of gaming. After powering up the long dead Arkham Origins online servers, I had a short FaceTime call with the human equivalent of horse armor in Skyrim. That is to say, absolutely worthless. And with that, I was off to the Falcone shipping yard. Even after mopping the floor with the first two militia soldiers, I decided that my current suit wasn't high-tech or durable enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Arkham Knight and his men. So I called up Lucius and ordered the most technologically advanced suit currently on the market. And with that out of the way, I was able to triangulate Scarecrow's location using only two lines, and deduce that the only chemical plant within 100 miles was in fact the location where he was creating a chemical weapon. Now, I won't lie. Ace Chemicals was where I started to realize just how easy this challenge was going to be. Combat encounters weren't affected all that much by everyone being a medic, since preventing revives was just a matter of simply tapping my L2 button. And Predator sections weren't that much more difficult either, because even without detective mode, it wasn't too difficult to just stay undetected the entire time. Using these strategies, I quickly rescued my boys Mark Chung and Adam Brewer before shifting my attention to Scarecrow. Getting to Scarecrow was actually a bit more challenging than the rest of Ace Chemicals. That's not to say it was difficult, just more difficult. The sheer amount of enemies in this fight made preventing revives impossible. And although this group did give me a bit of trouble, smoke pellets and batterings were more than enough to help me whittle down their numbers without allowing too many revives. Considering that this is one of the largest groups you fight in the game, I wasn't too optimistic about this challenge being very difficult and the following Predator encounter didn't do much to curb that assumption. It seemed like these thugs being medics messed with their behavior, because instead of transporting containers around the room like they typically do, all of them either just stood there or patrolled. None of them actually helped Scarecrow prepare the bomb like they're supposed to. This made it exceptionally easy to take them all out. So, a few silent takedowns and smashed windows later, I found myself spawning in as the best playable character in the Arkham franchise. And after a few minutes in the walking simulator, I escaped from Ace Chemicals and met Jim at the clock tower, where he made the unfortunate discovery that Barbara was dating a loser. And also that she was kidnapped. This isn't your fault, Jim. She works for time. This is all your fault, Jim. We'll fill her. Gordon was not taking the news well, and I couldn't blame him. I could only imagine what he was feeling in that moment even if it was just a small fraction of the disappointment I feel whenever I look at Tim, that's just too much for any ordinary man to handle. Anyways, the next order of business was to lower the bridge to Miyagani Island, but to do that, I was going to have to go through a predator encounter at Grand Avenue Station. 
This is where things started to become less baby easy, since simply staying undetected for the majority of the encounter wasn't an option anymore. Now the Arkham Knight would ask his guys to report in after I took down three thugs, at which point it would be inevitable that the bodies are found. However, there's a reason I said less easy instead of more difficult. Because even with the Arkham Knight checking in on his guys and exposing my presence, this encounter was something one of Stag's monkeys could get through with ease. And with the bridge to Miyagani lowered, it was time to put the main quest on pause so that I could be introduced to a side mission the game had already introduced to me. So I headed to the orphanage and saved Catwoman from being tied to a chair. Really great riddle, Enigma. The militia tunnel underneath Grand Avenue was just as easy as you might imagine. It consists of an astounding one combat encounter that, although fairly long, was completely trivialized by the multi-ground takedown. Next up was the first penguin cache, and getting in wasn't too complicated. I did get spotted and shot, but this is what prompted me to begin the strategy that I would use for most predator encounters this run. My master strategy was to take out one thug in order to lure everybody to the same spot. Then when they were all grouped up, I'd take them out too. Usually I couldn't get everybody all at once, but overall this strat worked wonders. From here I headed inside, found out that Penguin is actually pretty effective when used as a weapon, and then began the combat encounter with Nightwing. This fight went really well. Once again, the multi-ground takedown made things a breeze, but even with that aside, I was just playing really well. Not only did I not get hit at all during this fight, but the only reason I lost my combo was because this ground takedown failed. So I took down the Brute with an environmental takedown and then tag teamed the last guy with Nightwing. And when the fight was over, you will never guess what happened. I ran into Michelangelo! For those of you who don't know, Michelangelo Carl Hines is a friend I made during my attempt to beat Batman Arkham Origins I Am The Knight without any upgrades. I highly suggest you check that video out if you want all of Michelangelo's extensive lore. But the story synopsis is that basically after becoming friends with Batman, Michelangelo decided that being a criminal wasn't how he wanted to live his life, and switched to the side of justice by becoming a corrupt cop. Well, as it turns out, his switch to the side of justice didn't stick. I was going to ask what made him change his mind on being a cop, but before I could get the words out, he introduced me to his friend, Curtis Rodriguez, who will unfortunately die from a stroke on April 2nd of 2045. On the plus side, he's looking amazing for his age. Anyways, with the fight over, all I had to do was blow up Penguin's weapons cache. But just because Michelangelo was chill with me didn't mean that Curtis wasn't ready to put up a fight if I tried to open that door. Jokes aside, these two were preventing me from finishing the mission. The game still counted them as enemies, meaning I couldn't open this door until they were knocked out. But no matter what I did, they just wouldn't go down. I tried using the remote control battering since those worked in Arkham Origins, but even that wasn't doing the trick. By rewatching the footage, I noticed that both of these thugs were ones that I knocked out while interrogating Penguin. It seemed that them being revived after being knocked out in a cutscene messed with their AI. So my only option was to restart the fight and get through it without letting any of these three thugs get revived. And that was an extremely simple task given the fact that after reloading the checkpoint, these three thugs were despawned from the game. So after once again unleashing my godlike gaming abilities and getting through the fight without getting hit even a single time, I finally destroyed the cache and was on my way to bully Simon Stagg for having the same haircut as Joker in Lego Batman 1. Before even getting to Stag's airships, I made the horrifying discovery that the Arkham Knight's men had access to wall hacks. Not only did I get spotted by this random thug while being an entire postal code away from him, but after fleeing, this guy was able to spot and kill me through a wall the second I returned to the building. In response to the malicious hacking, I introduced a little hacking of my own, and turned Arkham Knight from a World of Tanks clone into a Watch Dogs clone. And to truly complete the Aiden Pierce experience, I made sure to engage in some casual murder. After reconstructing Stag's handprints for detective purposes, I went back to the cargo hold to fight the only electrified thug of the entire playthrough. Thanks to a quirk in how the game works, which I didn't even notice until it was pointed out to me in a comment, medics are unable to electrify other medics. This meant that outside of this single scripted instance, at no point in the entire run did an enemy become electrified because apparently this challenge wasn't easy enough already. Anyways, I made good use of Batman's no guns rule and made my way onto the second airship. Here I discovered that magic was in fact real, before going into an actually challenging predator encounter. To be fair, a decent amount of the difficulty came from me playing terribly, 
I got myself spotted by accidentally doing a drop attack, wasted my only smoke pellet by missing the throw, and then immediately wasted my fear multi takedown on just two thugs. The lure strat was once again my main method of attack, but to say that things were going well would be an even bigger lie than saying that Arkham City is well written. On the plus side, I got to witness the most wholesome interaction of the entire Arkham franchise, when this minigunner came over to help his friend get unstuck from a railing. Anyways, I then proceeded to nearly get myself killed before committing the ultimate sin of upgrading my armor to restore health instead of taking the death like a man. But with that, I took down the minigunner, witnessed the first testing of Scarecrow's brand new blimp repairing machine, and then watched Oracle roleplay as Henry Adams. And standing there, watching Barbara lie dead in her wheelchair, I realized what I had to do if I wanted to stop Scarecrow. I needed to give Poison Ivy another ride in the bitchmobile. If I showed her my wheels, maybe she'd be impressed enough to help me. And you know what? That plan worked like a charm. Because after showing Poison Ivy my impeccable driving skills, she trusted me enough to interrupt the game with slow and drawn out Skype calls. So now that we were working together, I fought my way through 16 tank fights, obtained a Batmobile upgrade, and helped Ivy unearth the Great Deku Tree. And with Ivy's wood now fully out and hardened, I headed to Panessa Studios, where Alfred gave me some great news. If he finds out she's gone and you didn't tell him, you will lose him forever. Wait, so you're telling me that all I have to do is avoid talking to Robin and he'll leave my life for good? God, it's the best of both worlds. Next up was taking down the Militia Relay Network on Founders Island. The first one was just a simple combat encounter, so things went super smoothly. I mean, I didn't get my ass kicked or anything. With the Arkham Knight's Wi-Fi shut off and his Suicide Squad play session thoroughly ruined, I went through a quick and easy Cobra Tank battle before finally facing off against the Arkham Knight himself. Oh, never mind. He just left right after the fight began like he always does. I guess every Robin is a disappointment in this universe. Anyways, with the Arkham Knight's missile system down, it was time to go and save Robin, who had run into a bit of trouble at Panessa Studios. Now, did I want to save Robin? No. But, did I want to pay a visit to the greatest anime waifu in Batman game history? Yes. So the sacrifice was worth it. Getting inside Panessa Studios was easy enough. Despite them setting up invisible walls to prevent me from knocking them off ledges, I still managed to take out all of Harley's guys without too many issues. And pretty much the entire rest of Panessa Studios was just as easy. The first fight was a breeze even with Robin being his typical useless self. In fact, this fight was so easy that it convinced me to stop using the multi-ground takedown for the rest of the run, choosing instead to embrace traditional methods like phasing my enemies in and out of walls or mutilating them beyond recognition. Christina Bell was up first, and although getting to her may seem like a difficult task, let me assure you that just like everything else in this challenge, it wasn't. The regular thugs were as easy to deal with as ever, and even the minigunners weren't an issue thanks to this game allowing Batman and Robin to perform that sweet, sweet Kratos and Boy finisher combo on them. So, with a few murders and camera glitches, Robin and I took down Bell's men before doing the same to her, allowing us to move on to Albert King. King's boss fight actually isn't changed at all from the normal game, since his fight already has him reviving enemies. So, after a couple dual team takedowns, none of which failed because I got greedy, Robin and I took down Albert King and were on to Johnny Charisma. Five bomb disarms and a headbutt later, it was time to face Harley herself and put an end to this massive side tangent of a plotline. Although not difficult in the slightest, this fight was pretty interesting. After taking down Harley and fighting for a bit, I noticed that everybody kept running away. Curious as to where they were going, I followed and found that everyone was running to the opposite side of the studio to revive this group of thugs that I took down before Christina Bell's section. But even with their manpower effectively doubled, they were no match for Batman and his incompetent, pathetic excuse for a sidekick. After bringing Hardly back to the holding cells, I watched Henry participate in the classic American pastime known as getting shot, before finally deciding to fulfill my lifelong dream of getting rid of Robin once and for all. And don't worry, I did make sure to tell him his wife was dead right after locking him up. And with Robin now emotionally crippled for life, it was time to spend six hours doing side missions before finally circling back to the main story. After noticing just how happy I was to finally be rid of Robin, Scarecrow decided to even the odds by gassing the entirety of the city he had just caused to be evacuated, leaving me with no choice but to ask the Monkey Whisperer how I could get my car running again. 
I did die once while trying to get to Stag, when the Arkham Knight's men remembered they had cheat codes enabled, which they used to instantly locate and kill me. My second attempt went much better, and before too long I had located Stag's Uranium-235. Sixty tank fights and a gardening session later, I took down the Arkham Knight, and then watched him use Dante Ravioli's patented Nike strat to run away from a fight for the seventeenth time. From here, I watched Ivy die for a city she hated, had a weird glitch with my camera after skipping the cutscene, and then talked to Dean Pelton at the GCPD, who told me he had tracked Gordon's location. Finally, I knew where he was. I was going to get revenge for him hitting me. Getting into the Arkham Knight's HQ wasn't all that interesting, but there were a few noteworthy moments. I had a moment where the Batmobile decided to run me over before driving into the massive fan, killing me instantly. And believe it or not, the game actually presented me with a difficult fight. Between the massive amount of enemies, the thugs willing to camp me with throwables, and Spider-Man thugs climbing up walls, this fight actually gave me a decent bit of trouble for reasons other than me being terrible. That being said, I still managed to get through the fight while only being hit twice. The excavator fight was just a matter of sitting in front of tunnels and then baiting the Arkham Knight into following me, a task so easy that I decided to style on him with some Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 moves. He really didn't appreciate the disrespect though, and so he killed me just moments later. But lucky for me, Lucius made a spare Batman, which I was able to play as for the rest of the run. Jason's boss fight was fairly standard. Although I did die twice here, both deaths were more the fault of my own stupidity than this section being difficult. Detective mode was already useless against most thugs, so the optically camouflaged enemies weren't really a challenge. Basically, as long as I played things safe and took everybody out before going for Jason, I wouldn't have any trouble getting to him. There were a few times Jason spotted me before I got to him, but whenever that happened, I still managed to get the takedown. Except the first time where he killed me, but we're not going to talk about that. So, with Jason defeated, I went back to Gordon. And looking at him sitting in that chair, bloodied and tied up, I just couldn't help but feel bad. I mean, sure he hit me earlier, but he was under a lot of emotional stress. Plus, I did get his daughter killed. At this point, we were pretty much even. So, I untied him, and on our way to confront Scarecrow, we had a pretty interesting conversation. You know, you see a lot in this job, a lot of pain. But I'll never forget gunning down an eight-year-old boy's parents. I was thinking, I may never get a chance to tell you this, to say. I'll never be sorry I gunned down your old man. With the same Bruce, we gunned down our family. Just when I thought that maybe we could let bygones be bygones, Jim tells me that he was the one who killed my parents all those years ago. And as if that wasn't enough, he then revealed that he was helping Scarecrow this entire time. He said they had faked Barbara's death and that all of this was just a clever plan to take me out the same way he did my parents. You never should have trusted me. Never! <laughs> Unfortunately for Jim, though, I was able to kidnap Barbara before he could kill me and took her to the one spot where I knew he'd never be able to reach her, the building he works in. And with Oracle safe, my next task was to take down the militia soldiers trying to hack my Roblox account from the clock tower. One death and revenge murder later, I got back to the GCPD just in time to stop the men Scarecrow and Jim had sent to take Oracle back. The first two combat encounters were really easy, and after an hour-long take fight, I went up to the roof to get my ass handed to me by the Virgin Twins and their army of incels. So, after successfully failing and then succeeding to stop the attack on the GCPD, I went to Panessa Studios, where I discovered that Jim and Scarecrow had kidnapped Robin. As much as I really didn't want to save Robin, I knew that with him in their possession, there was a very real possibility that he could learn Barbara was still alive, and I simply could not allow that. So, I handed over my chastity belt to Scarecrow, fought through an army of Jokers, played some Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, and took down Scarecrow, proving that, yes, you can beat Batman Arkham Knight if every enemy is a medic. I know this video was a lot more focused on jokes than talking about the challenge itself, but to be honest, that's just because this was ridiculously easy. Batman is just so needlessly overpowered in this game with the ability to instantly take down mini gunners or to throw three batarangs with a single quick fire. This game just makes you too overpowered to make a challenge like this truly difficult. If you made it this far in the video, thank you. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to see all my future uploads. As you can tell by this completely unedited and totally not out of context comment, I'm basically as cool as Tyler the Creator. And if that isn't worth a sub, I don't know what is. That's all I've got for now. See ya.